everyone, Zana Decora here. Hope you're all okay, and I'm back with my next review. So today I have decided that I'm going to do a review on Prince of Persia. Now, before everyone starts to get confused with which Prince of Persia I'm on about, I'm on about the fourth Prince of Persia, or as I call it, the 2008 version. So, without further ado, let's begin. So the story follows the prince, or as I like to call him Persia for short, and his journey across the desert along with a, com a mysterious young woman called Elika and their adventure or task to try and stop an evil dark god called Araman from escaping and pretty much destroying the end of the world. They also have to defeat his minions along the way and have to deal with Elika's father who goes a bit deranged as the story continues. The one thing I really like about this story is the interaction between the Prince and Elika because I find that they both they work against each other and work with each other in certain circumstances. And the Prince is pretty interesting as well. He's, well, funnier, um, he's got a better charisma. I just find him a lot better than the one from the original P Prince of Persia series. So, yeah. Want to play a game? Persia, I'm busy right now. Come on, it'll be fun. Fine. S. Scarf. Hey, you got it. So the story is interesting with the way the characters combine with each other and the story is pretty simple to follow and it's not too complicated to understand and there's a lovely big twist during the end. So for me, it's getting a four out of five. So for the visuals for Prince of Persia, I really, really liked the visuals for it. It was soul shaded, which made it really like, almost like a graphic kind of comic-y style to it. And the colors were really rich and vibrant and the, the world felt like real, almost like real life. And the fact that they didn't put a lot of detail in, but there was still so much detail in the environment itself. And I pretty much stood looking out especially across some of the towers in the game for quite a while looking at the surroundings down below so for visuals it's getting a four out of five for me so for g persia g gameplay yes i was about to say that <sighs> so for gameplay the main thing that i instantly came across while playing the game was that you can't die at all Elika is quite a nice, caring person and saves you every single time you die, whether it be from manoeuvring to new areas, jumping and not getting the landing, not reaching the place you want to go, or just jumping in the completely wrong direction, she will save your life. And she also saves your life in combat as well. Another thing about moving around to different areas is the world is open, so you can go to whichever area you want to go to first. There's not like a strict path you need to follow. As you're picking up the abilities that Elika has, there are certain areas that are then unlocked for you, but there are up to four to choose from. So if you wanted to go to a certain one first, you could do so, while picking up light seeds along the way to unlock the next abilities. During combat, you're able to choose between your sword, your gauntlet, aerobatic moves, or you can ask Elika to, Elika to jump in and help you out and you can mix these combos together to make stronger, powerful ones, or you can just do quick, basic combos. And it's nice to have that mix between the two. There are also puzzles in the game that you can work on to, well, just to give the game a little bit more of a different kind of feel. And there'll be a puzzle for each of the areas that you travel to, whether that be a simple puzzle of trying to make your way up, up to the top of a tower, or to unlock an area to be able to activate your next ability, etc. But it gives the game a nice pace, so you're not necessarily just traveling around all over the place to defeat an enemy and then come all the way back. There is something else you can do. So for gameplay, it's getting a four out of five for me. For difficulty, well, it doesn't actually have a difficulty setting at the start. You can't actually choose which difficulty you want to do but it gets progressively, well, not necessarily more difficult, but it adds more challenges to you as you tra traverse through the story. You'll end up with other things that you have to watch out for while you're traveling to your next location, such as things that can prevent you from jumping to certain areas, or even things that will grab you and slam you into the wall and try to, obviously, de defeat you, and Elika will come to your rescue, so you always need to look out for those. And then during combat, 
there'll be a moment where the enemy you're fighting will only be able to be affected by one particular move which you have to use to obviously break that particular shield to be able to carry on using the combos. So it was nice to have that little bit of mix in there and it slowly brings it up so each time you'll have one ability or one challenge added to it each time. So it's not going to completely blow your mind with all of this stuff happening at once. It's nice and slowly paced. So for that, it's getting a four out of five for me. So overall, the game was fun, simple to understand. I loved the character connections between Elika and the Prince. And overall, the story was really interesting to follow. Combat was smooth, really fun to do. So overall, it's getting a 16 out of 20 for me. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. And I'd like you to like... Yes. Persia. S. Shut up! No. Seriously? Aha! No. I give up. It's too soon to give up. I give up! Soulless follower of Araman. How?